The Lord spoke to me to tell you that um, this message is specifically for the hour that you and me are living in. Amen. This very day, this very season. And this message that God gave me was to encourage you and to push you into your prophetic destiny. Amen. Amen. Now, there is a difference between your destiny and your prophetic destiny. Your prophetic destiny is what God has ordained, has desired, and has put together for you to complete the purpose in which he created you for. Before Adam was on the earth, God had already decided what Adam's journey would be. So God made a garden, put the man in the garden, and he gave him an assignment to subdue the earth, to replenish the earth. So your prophetic destiny is in the perfect will of God. If you, are, if you are in the perfect will of God, you are in the position to receive every single thing that God has desired and designed for you. Amen. If you are in the good will of God, then it means that what you are doing, God is okay with it, but is not really 100% with it. This is what we call the permissive will of God. God can allow it because it will serve his purpose, but it will not serve, his, uh, serve it to the maximum or to the point that he wants it to be in. And then there is your own will and your own destiny where you wake up, you say, this is what I want to be. And many times that usually ends up in failure and frustration. And uh, that is not a prophetic destiny. That is what you have decided for yourself. So God wants to fulfill the prophetic pronouncement that he had spoken over your life. Amen. Amen. Before you stepped into this world, before you are born, I think I'm speaking to the overflow. Amen. Maybe I need to go back there. Hallelujah. There is a specific assignment that the Lord God gave for you. Amen. Now, I want you to hear this. It says, while the earth remains, seed time, harvest, cold and heat, summer, winter, day and night shall not cease. But the Lord spoke to me about drought in the promised land. Amen. Now, you have to understand that drought has nothing to do with seasons. And this is what the Lord Jesus told me to tell you. That understand a season is a pattern in which the cycle or, or the renewal of the earth continues when you go through harvest there is seed then people have the time to sow seeds then you know we have that in africa we have what we call the rainy season other parts of africa have winter but all this makes a, a climate change and as climate moves and shifts the earth also continues and the creatures in it also are able to be sustained now when it comes to a drought a drought is not in the system of God of, weather, or of the weather or, or let me say it of the patterns of seasons. So I want you to understand that there is no such thing as a drought season. Whenever there is drought, it is God interrupting your regular schedule in order to produce something. Woo! I, I think I'm talking to the wrong people. Yeah. Now you need to understand that no demon, no devil can produce drought in your life. Yes. Amen. Uh, stagnation is not drought. Limitation is not drought. But drought, the only one who can cause there to be a famine or dryness, it is God. Amen. But whenever God is allowing, uh, 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 when God is interrupting uh, um, seasons, to bring drought you need to understand that there is a special assignment there is a special separation there is a special equipping that God is doing to you Amen. there are some of you that you feel like you have been in a drought for a moment for a while that you have begun to question did God really send me in I feel like I'm talking to the wrong people but I want you to understand that you can be in the promised land and there may be drought. Wow. Come on. Woo. I feel like maybe the overflow is the one that can hear me. We hear you. We yes, hear you. Hallelujah. Now, whenever God sends a drought, is usually to position his people, both physically and spiritually. 
Because the issue with man is that it is very easy for us to become comfortable, but we don't understand that life is a journey. Now, many times people only think of the journey when you are building up to something. But to God, your journey is not only to in building up to something, but is in co- accomplishing the purpose in which he created you for. Amen. Many of us, we want to work, have money, and then we can buy houses, and then we live a happy life, and then we die. But God is not thinking of it like that. God looks at your spiritual life as a journey back to the celestial city. Before you return to heaven, what have you done along the way? How have you affected the spiritual atmosphere of your family, of your people? So some of you, your comfort has forced God to send drought. Uh, I feel like some of you are not happy. I feel like some of you are not happy, but I have to tell you what God told me. Amen. Amen. Now for every, for, 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 for certain times, God will permit you to be sustained in the promised land. Because remember the promised land is the land flowing with milk and honey. Now, just because there is milk and honey, it is easy for you to forget God and God's assignment. When God was sending the children of Israel back into, each, into, into, into Canaan, the land promised to them, the Lord told them, listen, when you get into this place, when you start enjoying honey, when you start enjoying milk, when things are going your way, do not forget the Lord your God and don't adapt the ways of the people around you. Yes. I feel in my spirit that you are about to be shifted. Yes. And this message is for the hour. I and whoever is hearing my voice at this moment, yeah, I understand that you are about to be redirected, repositioned for God to fulfill what he desires with you. Somebody say glory be to God. Glory be to God. Now I want you to hear me and hear me well. Genesis chapter 12 from verse 10. Genesis 12 from verse 10. And there was a famine in the land. Just because there is famine in where God sent you, it doesn't mean you're in the wrong place. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, you teach him. Teach him. I think this is for the overflow. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The Lord swore to Abraham, He told Abraham, Leave your father and mother's house. Leave your people, leave your tent, leave your people, separate. Go unto a land that I will show you. Abraham leaves everything, leaves everyone. Takes his wife, takes Lot, and at some point he separates with Lot. And God tells him, this is the land that I've given to you, and to you, and to your seed. Abraham walks in the land. God says, as far as your eye can see, it feels like a Lion King moment, Simba. As far as you can see the sun going, it's ours. God tells him, walk in the land. See how far it is. See how vast it is. I have given it to you and your descendants. But as Abraham remained in the land, one day there was a drought. I'm here to encourage somebody. I'm here to encourage somebody. I'm here to tell you the word of the Lord. Yes. That just because there is a drought, hey, come on. it doesn't mean you are in the wrong place. Amen. Amen. Glory. You see, when you are in the wrong place, you experience limitation, frustration, hardship. Yes. But you don't experience a drought. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Because when you are in the wrong place, other people will be doing well. But you will not be doing well. But when drought hits the promised land, everyone is not doing well. Everything is not moving. Everything looks ugly. You see, when the Lord Jesus, Isaiah prophesied this, he said, when when people will see him, And see him on the cross suffering. They will say that God has forsaken him. God has left him. God is accursed. Notice that was Jesus' drought. 
a moment that everybody was going to leave him. Everyone was going to turn against him. Even God himself turned his back on him. It did not mean Jesus was in the wrong place. Your suffering is not in vain. Yes. As you remain faithful to the word of God. Yes. As you remain faithful, I feel like I'm talking yes. to the wrong people. Come on. When God speaks to you and he says he's doing something with you. Yes. If you see things dry. If you see things difficult. If you see like nothing is moving. It doesn't mean you're in the wrong place. Amen. I believe that drought is a filter to filter out the fakes in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There are certain people that are like leeches in your life. They are designed to eat and take from you. My God. But the moment there is nothing more to eat, they are the first ones that will leave you. Amen. So true. If you are seeing your life is becoming dry, the relationships you used to have are disappearing. The people you used to be with, they are left you. They are now friends with other people. I am here to tell you, begin to praise God. Come on. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm here to tell you, begin to praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Remember, whenever there is a drought, it is death to your enemies, but life to you. Because drought will kill everything in the land. But imagine you have still been in the land and you have not died. Mm -hmm. talking good. Is somebody listening to me? Oh, yes. Things are dry. Scandemic happened, but you're still here. Amen. People lost their jobs, but you're still here. Amen. Somehow God is still maintaining you, taking care of you. Amen. I, I don't know if you can hear me. Yes. The Lord is saying to you, yes. understand that the drought is a filter. Because everything in the land will die, including your enemies, except you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Amen. Jesus. You know, demons don't like a place that they cannot inflict pain. Oh, somebody heard that one. When there is nothing to steal, kill, and destroy, what is the enemy going to do? Come on. Are, are you listening to me? Yes. When there is, there is nothing more that the devil can mess up, if there is nothing more the devil can take from you. Yes. When God positions your value to be in what he has given you internally. Yes. Not what is around you. Yes. Yes. The devil knows that he has no chance against you. Yes. Yes. Many of you God has allowed drought so that your faith can move from things. Jesus. And to move into Jesus who lives in you. Hallelujah. For you yes. to understand greater is he that is in you. Yes. The one that is in you is able to give you life. Hallelujah. There are demons that are escaping your life right now. Yes. Yes. There is witchcraft being broken over your life right now. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Uh, sit down for two seconds. Listen. Sometimes in order for God to show you off, he has to put you in a situation where everything is dying so that you can stand out. That the enemies that thought you would die, that those who thought you would fail, that those who thought you would remain behind, will see the wonder of God moving in your life. Anyone that will shout fire and, and believe this word. There is a shift already coming in your life. Listen. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. 
Lebara Shaka Tabaya. Uh, sit down for two seconds. Sit down for two seconds. We are going somewhere. Touch your neighbor, say, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. You are still in the promised land. You're still in the promised land. Touch your neighbor to your right. Say, neighbor. Neighbor. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. You are still in the promised land. You're still in the promised land. Find a neighbor behind you and say, neighbor. Neighbor. Uh, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You are still in the promised land. You're still in the promised land. No. Now hear me. The Bible says, And there was famine in the land. And Abraham went down into Egypt to sojourn there, for the famine was grievous in the land. Verse 11. And it came to pass when he had come near to enter into Egypt, that he said unto Sarai his wife, Behold, I know that thou art fair woman to look upon. Mm. Somebody said the Sarah anointing. Therefore, it shall come to pass. When the Egyptians shall, shall see thee, that they shall say, this is his wife. And they will kill me. But they will save thee alive. Verse 13. Say, I pray thee, thou art my sister, that it may be well with me for the sake, for thy sake, and my soul shall live because of thee. Now, listen to me. Many of you, there are two errors that we make. Whenever things are difficult in the promised land, we go into places that God didn't send us. Talk about it. God did not tell Abraham, go unto Egypt. Abraham looked into his life and he said, I need to go to Egypt. Now the issue of creating your own solutions is that you need to formulate a way to sustain yourself in those solutions. So good, so good. I don't know if somebody can hear me. If you create, you see, when God gives you an instruction... God also guarantees your protection Amen. within what he's sending you to do. Amen. The Lord will look over you. Yes. The, God, the Lord will watch over you. Amen. The Lord will bless you. The Lord will sustain you against enemies. But the moment you create your own way, you also have to guarantee your own safety. Yes. You have to guarantee your own well-being because now God is no longer involved. That means you begin to compromise the blessing of God within you. Come on. You see, many of you, drought has made you to compromise who you are. In order for you to be accepted, in order for you to survive, uh, maybe this is for overflow. Yeah, yeah. Teaching good. I, I thought I was speaking to somebody. Yeah. Some of you have compromised this. You have compromised who you are. You believe the Lord Jesus on Sunday, you are lifting your hands. Allah Bashata. Father, you are worthy. You meet the people who believe in planets. They say the universe. You also say I, the universe, you know, the energy. In order for you to be accepted, you begin to compromise the name of God that God has given you. You begin to compromise your values, the things that you know that the Lord will not be pleased with. You start to compromise them in order for you to just have a way through. When we were going through our own drought as a ministry in our time of infancy and as we are still growing, lots of people 
There's a lot we could have done to associate ourselves, to join ourselves in order for us to be accepted. But I never did that because I understood that what God has given me, even if it takes 50 years, one day, Amen. Amen. it will be a blessing to many souls. Amen. Because it did not come from me, it came from him. Yeah. As long as I stay faithful to what he has given me to do, then God will reveal himself. That's good. So hear me, see, hear me by the spirit of God. Abraham, our great father, began to compromise what God had given him. Instead of pursuing God, instead of seeking the face of God, he sought out his own solutions and by seeking out his own solutions, he also created his own protection. Now, whenever drought comes, you have to understand that God is trying to push your faith to another dimension. Amen. Because faith cannot grow without a challenge. It is within the confines of a challenge that faith can rise up. Amen. When things are good, you cannot use faith. Because faith can only materialize when there is nothing. The Bible says we know by faith that those things, who, those things which are made were made out of nothing. So we know that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things what? Not seen. So you need to be in a position where there is nothing. For faith to appear. Yes. And when faith appears, then you are able to create and build up what God has ordained for you to build up. Yes. You cannot build or, 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 or produce what God wants you to produce in a place where others have also built. Yeah. Hmm. I, I feel like you didn't hear what I'm saying. That's good. Sometimes God has to wipe the place clean so that you can start. Amen. But in order for you to start, faith must be in play. Yes. Amen. But faith cannot materialize yeah. until there is a challenge. The greater the challenge, the greater the potential to have strong and great faith. Amen. The issue with us as believers is we are always, either we embrace suffering. And when I say embracing suffering, I'm saying this in a negative sense. Christians should not be afraid of suffering because we know suffering is temporary. Yes. Christians should not be afraid of a challenge because we know we have already overcome. Amen. But there are believers who have embraced poverty Thinking that poverty is holiness. Thinking that they are suffering their lack of sustenance or, or their inability to live well. It means that they are the closest to God. I'm here to tell you that that is the greatest deception Amen. ever released on the face of the planet. Amen. To the point that if they see you as a child of God, if they see your man or woman of God looking good, dressed well, they start to formulate things. Ah, uh, they are stealing. They are robbing from people. They are false. They are this because they have to satisfy their need of suffering. I, I don't know if you can hear me. There are times that God will bless you until it looks like you're doing juju. I receive. There are times that God will bless you in order to provoke people to speak. Wow. Uh, let, 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 me, let me tell you something. This is personal to me because you see, the thing about the prophetic ministry and being a prophet, not just being gifted, but being a prophet, is that when you look at people who want to cling to what God has given you to do, you know them by the spirit and they don't even know that you know them because it is in the interest of God 
to protect his investment. Yes. And if God is going to protect his investment, those people who want to push themselves to be close, God will identify them for you to tell you who this is, who that is, who this is, who that is, who that is, what they are doing, what they are thinking, so that you can protect yourself. Amen. Not all protection is fire and brimstone. Not all protection is a wall of fire. The best protection is wisdom. Yes. So good. That's so good. good. That's good. You're helping us. When my brother Christian, before he went home to be in heaven, for they had given him when he had uh, gone through uh, sickness, they had, after his surgery, they gave him a year to live. We prayed and God made Christian live seven years longer than what they predicted. Thank you, Jesus. And they could not understand how is this guy alive? When Christian now became tired himself, he said, you know what? I don't want to be here anymore. Immediately I know this guy is about to go. And I remember the, the, the month before he left, God told me, in this month, I'm going to take your brother. The week he told me, on this day, I am taking your brother at this hour, at this time. Mm -hmm. Prophet Obed, my brother, the prophet is here. We prayed together. We spent nights here praying here. I brought a group of people. We prayed sincerely. We were here. We prayed. I did everything I can do. God told me, I'm not changing my mind. I want him to come. Mm -hmm. And I remember the day that he was going to be taken. It was a very heavy day for me because this is somebody I've never been separated with. But nevertheless, God did what he wanted to do, and he's in heaven. I've, I've even seen him there. Yeah. But look at how God is. God begins to give us even more increase. And I will tell you something that God told me. And I think me and Apostle spoke about this. And I believe Bishop R.K. who manages um, uh, Power Shot and, uh, and Realm of Meditation. All those who are subscribed, uh, uh, clap for him because he's doing an amazing job with that. Amen. He's my big brother. He's an elder brother to me. I've known him for years. Powerful man of God. He told me, he called me. And God had told me the same thing, but I, I was fighting. And God called him to tell me, said, you know, the Lord told me that your brother has become your weakness. That Satan can use to stop you from doing what you're doing. You're too much, your energy is all going there. So in order for you to do what God wants you to do, let him go. He told me this months before and I knew what he was saying was true. Now, when God took my brother home, my focus was even uh, 10 million percent on God's work. And God proved himself and God comforted me. It was very difficult for me. Despite knowing everything spiritual, the, the soul still grieved. You see, even the children of Israel, when Moses left, they still cried for Moses. God gave them 40 days to cry for him. Uh, Moses, uh, 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 even Abraham mourned for his wife for a while. Because it is human nature. Don't try to be so tough not to grieve. Amen. It is good to grieve. Amen. And at a certain time, grieving stops and we move on. But grieving is part of healing. And you have to understand, uh, grief, pain is the price we pay for love. Yeah. Whenever there is love, there must be pain. Yeah. You have to understand that. If you don't feel it, if it doesn't hurt, then you never loved the person. So... Good. so my brother has gone home and I refocus on the work of God and all of a sudden God expanded us even more. And I understood immediately that if God expanded me then, I will not be able to do what we need to do now. Yeah. It became very clear to me because you can see the shift was crazy. Some people who were praying with us, they are the first ones to say, "Ah, you see how God is blessing him? He sacrificed his brother for, <laughs> uh, listen, but I thank God that they can think like that because it means their faith in God is so small 
And it reveals who certain people are because if they can believe Satan can give you increase, then it shows you where they stand in God. I'm here to tell you when they talk about you, tell them what you're saying is actually true. It's okay. Amen. When they accuse you, accept it. Amen. Don't fight them because yeah. how can Satan bless more than God? Yes. Right. That part. So whenever droughts come, difficulty comes, thank God for it. Amen. Because it filters the faith even out of the work that God has given you. So I want you to look at this quickly. Go to Genesis. Genesis. Chapter. Mm, Genesis 26. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Genesis 26 from verse 1. Are you ready? And there was famine in the land besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. So notice there was never a famine in Canaan until Abraham came. It was the first one. Abraham has his son Isaac. Isaac is born to him. Isaac is living in the same land and the same thing that happened to his father happens. And if you keep reading, it tells you the same exact story. He also took his wife and they went down. When he got there, he said, listen, you are my sister. I don't want to die. You are fine, beautiful and everything. Uh, I don't want to die when we get into this place. Abraham created a spiritual pattern in his family. Because of the drought that came to him the first time. Be careful when you go through drought to not create a pattern that your children will have to repeat until somebody in the lineage corrects it. So good. Wow. That's so good. No, you didn't hear what I said. Yeah. Isaac was not even born when his father went to Egypt. But spiritually it was already in him. He was already programmed spiritually that when a difficult time will come, you will compromise the same way your father compromised. Now, instead of moving on, God has to assassinate that pattern within your family. This is why many of you are going through a hard time, not because of your mistake, but there is a correction that God is making in your family. Amen. There is a wrong that God is trying to right. Yes. And to correct. I feel like I'm talking to the wrong people. Amen. There is a correction God is bringing into your family. Amen. And you are that pen that God is using to right the wrong. Amen. Amen. So there are certain things you will not understand. I didn't do anything. Nobody did anything. Why are we even going through this? I've been fasting, I've been praying, I've been doing this. But you need to navigate and ask yourself, mm, what is it pushing me towards? What is it directing me to? Is it sending me to a place whereby I will compromise what God gave me? Let me look into our family. How many people compromised? How many people gave up on what God gave them? Oh, so God positioned me here to rewrite the family history. I'm here to tell you, you are about to rewrite every error in your family. God is using you, he's using you, he's using... I I feel like, are you sure you can hear me? There are corrections that God is making. And God is using you to correct this mistake. Uh, Sit down for two seconds. So you notice Isaac also goes. Isaac also makes the same mistake. But the difference is now this. Isaac sows 
in the land where the famine was happening, he sowed in that land. Meaning he invested in that place spiritually. Is somebody listening to me? Yes. Isaac also produces somebody else. Mm. If you go to Genesis chapter 41, let's go to that. Genesis 41 from verse 53. Genesis 41 from 53. Genesis 41 from verse 53. Now, when, look at this. And the seven years of plent plenteousness that was in the land of Egypt were ended, verse 54. And the seven years of, of death began to come, according as to Joseph had said. And the death which is now the famine was in all lands, but in the land of Egypt there was bread. Stop right there. So Isaac fixed something because he understa understood something that my father came, I also came. But what my father did not do is he did not sow something here. Just in case the ones after me make the same mistake. We can have a stake in this place. Famine also comes. Famine comes. And Jacob, who is Israel, famine comes, but Israel does not leave the land of promise. But an extension of him is in the land where there is bread. Amen. Because that bread was already positioned spiritually to sustain them in a time that drought can be in the promised land. I feel like you can't hear me. Now, the issue with many of you is that you mistake the land that is supposed to sustain you for a period to be the promised land. Yeah. Many have entered into bondage. I, I, I feel like... Many have entered into bondage. Many have entered into bondage. Because the place that fed them, they mistook it to be a place that God sent them. Wow. When Joseph was sold and his brothers came, the Bible says that Joseph said, Now I know that the Lord sent me ahead of you. This time somebody is sent ahead of you to feed you and to send you back. Yes. Not for you to stay here until the no, for you to get bread and to go back. That's good. But when the children of Israel came into Egypt, they decided to stay. They forgot that they have a land flowing with milk and honey. Yeah. And Joseph, knowing them, he said, listen, the day we leave these lands, please take my bones. Mm. Are, are you listening to what I'm saying? Yeah. Understand this by the Spirit. Don't mistake your job to be your destiny. Just because it can pay your bills, it doesn't mean... Yes. Amen. Amen. Go there. Amen. Yeah. I think this is for people on the other side. That's right. Maybe this is for those who are online. Don't mistake... Yes, indeed, God can position a place to sustain you. Mm -hmm. But it is for a period. It is not where God wants you to stay. God is building you towards something. But the children of Israel loved Egypt so much that Egypt became a prison. Some of you are working in jobs you should have never worked for more than a year. For more than two years. For more than a few weeks. For more... There is a dream that God set in you. Yes. There is an idea that God put in you. Yes. 
There is a direction that God gave you. But you forgot about it. Because you're like, listen, one day it will happen. But for now, listen, I believe in working. I believe it. But don't mistake your job to be something that will be impactful in the world. So no one has ever become a millionaire working a job. Come on. You didn't hear what I'm saying. You can have a great paying job and all that. Now you can actually even become a millionaire. But some of you are compromising destiny for Egypt. Yeah. Talk about it. You are compromising the place that God has called you unto. You are compromising it. Because I need to pay my bills. I just need to be cool with this person because of this and this. I need to do this just because of this time. Listen to me, children of God. I am not telling you to be hyper spiritual. Because many of you will Jesus people out. Instead of your life being a reflection of Christ. Many of you will overdo it to the point that nobody even wants to be what you are. You end up being judgmental. You end up being all these things that when people look at you, there is nothing attractive about following the Lord. Good. Nothing at all attractive about you. Yet Jesus beautifies you. When people look at you, they should see... Why are you so patient? Why are you so graceful? Why are you like this? Why are you like that? What's your secret? Then you tell them, you know, you really want to know. Yes, I want to know. It is God, the Lord Jesus. Amen. So Jesus can make you like this. But for many of you, ah, ah. you shouldn't do that. You should Correct us. It, it becomes strange instead of people loving your Jesus people are confused if this is even the right Jesus they look at the Bible they look at you Different. Different. And, and, and the scriptures say that the Bible is a mirror so they look at the mirror they say why, why don't you look like what is Don't listen to me, children of God. Don't be that person. Amen. Let the Spirit of God convict people. You see, whenever, whenever people have the need, whenever people have the need to expose, to show off, to do this, you know there is something so broken within them. Some people like to reflect or, or project is that what is called projections? But they do this because of their own uncertainties within them. Their own fears. Their own confusions. But God did not call us to be that way. Are you listening to me? Amen. God never called us to be that way. As a child of God, you need to be just, when people see you, they don't understand your sweetness. Where is it coming from? Let everything come with ease because God is in you. Amen. So listen to me by the Spirit of God. Listen to me by the Spirit of God. Don't confuse what is expedient. You see, when, when God came to me, I was actually in prayer. We were doing live stream. And I remember this was in 2019 at the end. A mighty vision appeared to me and I saw Father Abraham in the middle of my living room appeared. Everybody was just feeling the power of God. People fell on the floor and I'm sitting there and I'm watching this vision. I froze. And Father Abraham told me this. He said, the Lord has sent me 
to impart in you grace so that you can be able to buy the house of God that God has set up. Tell the people to gather because it is time to build God's house. And this, is what, and this is what he told me. I've never shared this part, but this part I will tell you. And when we were streaming in those days, I touched on it, but I never really said it. This is what he said. Not every man has been given the privilege to build a house for God. God has chosen you to be one of the few to build his house because he chose you. Amen. 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 When I came out of the vision, I told everyone around, ah, we are not going back to Victory Boulevard. Woo. Let me tell you, financially it did not make sense why we were leaving Victory. Not truthfully. Is it not true Bishop JT is the Mr. President? If you ask him, he will tell you, it did not make any sense at all. If you ask Auntie Chandel, she will tell you. The prophetess knows it very. It did not make any sense. We were comfortable. I didn't have to have a building. There were no bills except, what were we paying, 1700 Yeah, on, on a... On a Poop, give him the mic for a second. Yeah, that was the most we would pay on a five... No, was it a five Thursday month? Yeah. If there's a five Thursday in a month, we paid 1700 But other than that, 15, like 1500 1500 Every month... We only met on a Thursday night. It was just me and my apostles that we, you know, we came together. That was it. Then God comes and tells you, oh, I want you to go and find something. And you go and you see the, the address and the place he sent you. Eight million and some change. Ah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You look at God, you're like, Father, did you speak? <laughs> yeah. Financially it makes no sense. And it doesn't make sense because everyone is also closing churches. Yes. Everyone is like, nah. It's true. We don't need a building. We are moving into a digital <laughs> ministry. There's no need to gather. We can just have church digitally. I'm cool with that. I have no problem. Listen, you can't fight uh, change. Amen. When the world is changing, you can't fight it. Techno you remember back in the day when radio was just coming into the market? Ah, people called, a lot of pastors preached against radio. It is the devil's device. After a few years, they started preaching on the same radio. <laughs> TV is the devil. Before you knew it, the televangelists appeared. Yeah. The same people. There are changes you can't fight. Uh, we need to stop and make the environment clean. They are flying with jets. <laughs> I just told you something. They should buy horses. Oh, no. <laughs> are you getting what I'm saying? The world will change. We can't fight it. We have to flow with it and use whatever instrument that is available for the glory of God. Amen. Uh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Listen to this. Listen to this. So I'm sitting there wondering, how has this happened? Then I remember, no, Daddy Abraham came to me. So I told gathered people, we started doing what we needed to do. Uh, my, my brother and, and best friend, Prophet EJ, travels, comes. He goes where God spoke to me and he lays down. Father Abraham appears to him too. He wakes up, he runs to me, tell me he tells me, you didn't tell me that you had an encounter. He sent me, he said, if you want what I gave you, to Prophet Lovi, your brother, tell him to pray for you because I gave it to him, but he can pass it on to you. I think you've even heard him talk about this. So immediately he comes and he tells me, I'm like, ah. So we do all these things, and before you know it, God gave us this amazing place Amen. that we can gather any time we need Amen. for his glory. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. If I compromised, yeah. If I compromised easily, Victory Boulevard, even though it was a place of victory, it would have ended up being our place of bondage. Because for you to be in the place of victory, you have to fight all the time. Mm. 
Yes. That's good. Say that again. But when we did what God wanted us to do, we came on what? Easy Street. After you have fought, things need to be what? Easy. That's good. Uh, some people miss it. All of it is prophetic. Amen. When you go through drought, God takes you to a place where the fear of men has to die. Amen. That's no man can do anything to you. Yeah. Because no man can stop what God has decided. No one can stop what God has decided. I, say, I will say it one more time. No one has the ability. Are you listening to me? Yes. No one has the capacity to stop anything that God has decided for your life. Amen. They can try it. They can attempt it. But what God's hand is in, nobody can do anything Glory. about it. Yes. Thank I, you. I don't know if you can hear me. Thank you, Jesus. So the fear of men in us needs to die. Amen. I will do it for you, prophet. The fear of men needs to die. You see, intimidation is of Satan. Gossip is of the devil. Last night, I was having a conversation with Auntie Benny and, and my little sister Eva and Mama Ghana clan, and I was telling them, there are people who are not uh, devils. Them themselves, they are what I, called, I call a Satan. They have become the embodiment of the, of the boss himself. They are not just devils. They, are, they have become the, the reflection of Satan, their boss. Never allow anybody to intimidate you. Amen. When God has called you, nobody can do anything to you. Amen. They can talk all they want. Amen. Even if you made a mistake, <laughs> even if you made a mistake, listen, we are not beyond mistakes. I have made mistakes. You make mistakes. That doesn't disqualify you from being a child of God. Thank you, Jesus. That doesn't stop you from being sent of God. Yes. That doesn't even stop you from being called of God. Yes. Everyone makes mistakes. Just some people's mistakes are highlighted. Some people's mistakes are hidden. But nevertheless, we will all make mistakes. A mistake is simply what? A mistake. But some people want you to never, ever make a mistake. Yet, if you don't make a mistake, you cannot grow. Amen. So good. So true. Okay, uh, maybe I'm talking to angels. No, that's good. That's good. That's good. If you never make a mistake, you cannot grow. Mistakes are necessary for growth. Yeah. Did you hear what I said? Yes. Mistakes are what? Necessary for growth. Continual mistakes is foolishness. Clear it up. It's good. But to make a mistake is normal. Sometimes your mistake is not even that you made a mistake. You just exposed what God showed you that was not meant to be shown to others. You shared your dreams that yeah. God spoke to you. And prematurely you told your enemies and they planned against you. Sometimes your mistake is not that you actually messed up. It's that you spoke of the things that God spoke to you privately. Yes. Publicly. You're helping us. Wow. So good. This is why as a child of God, you need to be careful how you talk. You see me, Amen. me, I am alone. Ah, I just live in my own world. I am just me. There are four men that I speak to. Prophet EJ. Baba Obednego. <laughs> ah, the prophet of God. Prophet Glovis. Prophet Innocent. These are the only men of God I speak to. If I speak to anybody outside of that, it's family. Family. 
just to make friends for friends. Mm -mm. You realize that people are what I call a Satan. They are looking for you to do something so that they can highlight themselves. They'll say, oh, I used to go to that person's house. Yet they have never even spoken to you. You need to be wise. Amen. Mistakes are part of life. They lead us to where God has called us. They show if we have something wrong and they get fixed. This is why I laugh at people who say, oh, that man of God, this man of God, they, Benny, he, no, that, that. You have never saved any souls close to these guys. Sit down and shut up. Yes. Sit down. Amen. Leave this man alone. Never be ashamed of people that God is using. Amen. Imagine God, you see, can I, can I say this? I'm about to read the last verse. Let me say this. You see, the good thing about the difference between a man employing you and God employing you. A man employs you based on your history. God employs you based on your future. So good. So good. So good. God has already know, he knows every mistake you will make. Yes. Oh. Wow. He knows where you will miss it. Ah. And he's so okay with you. Amen. But men want, want God to use men according to their own yes. criteria. Yeah. That's so good. God chose murderers mm -hmm. knowing that they will kill. Mm -hmm. God said, I love David who will kill his friend. Yeah. And God never changed to, to David. Are, are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. Let me tell you, the devil is a liar. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 17 from verse 7. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you ready? Yes. Let's read it together. One, two, three. Blessed is the man that trusted in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. One more time. Blessed is the man that trusted in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. Uh huh. Next verse. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters and that spreadeth out her roots by the river. And shall not see when heat cometh, but her leaf shall be green. And shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. So understand this. By this verse you understand something very quickly. Understand this. Drought will come. Yes. Because God is already telling you in the years of drought, you will continue to bear fruit. It means our proof, fruits should not be based on good times. That's good. Many of you have based your success on when things are good. When things go bad, you hold back. You try to find a way. Na, 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 na. It means that blessing didn't come from God. When it comes from God, whether it is the most difficult time, whether it is the most challenging time, whether it is the time that men oppose you, understand this one thing. If it came from him, you are a tree planted by the river. Remember, this river is not... Because when drought comes, every river dries up. It's not talking about physical river. It's saying, who's planted by God. But not only are they planted, their roots have gone deep into God. You see, if your roots have not gone deep, when drought comes, you cannot pull from the reserve of God. So, good. so many people are not able to pull from the reserve of God. A lot of people cannot pull from the reserve of God. It is difficult for them to look to God. It is difficult for them to wait on God, mm -hmm. it is difficult. They will say, Father, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. Lord, I believe, I believe, I believe. Father, you can do everything. But because their roots are not deep, yes. they cannot pull from God. 
There are times that God will give, but there are times you have to pull from God. And if your roots are not deep, you cannot pull at the time of your need. I want you to hear that well. If your roots are not deep, you cannot pull from God when you need. The reason why you can come and I can pray for you and things can happen for you is because I have learned how to pull from God. Amen. Is that I know that if I ask God, I know my way around spiritually. That I know if I talk to God this way, if I plead with God this way, God will do it. Why? Because I know how to pull. The Lord Jesus said it this way. And I love what the Lord Jesus said. He said it this way. He said, Father, I thank you that you hear me. You always... He knew his position, that where he is, any time he desires something, he knows how to pull. It means God doesn't hear everyone. (laughs) It means God doesn't hear everyone. Many, so many men of God, and this is to men of God. I want to tell you this with a lot of love and tender mercies. If you're serving God, don't ever be salty when you see God lifting somebody. Amen. It shows why God is not lifting you. Amen. Amen. Because you only want to be the only one being celebrated. Amen. Yet the sky is so vast for so many stars to shine. Amen. But you want to be the only star that shines. That is a mistake. Yes. So good. It is evil. It is evil. Yeah. It is extra evil. Be okay with other people shining. Amen. Be okay with other people lift, being lifted because you know your elevation is also coming. Amen. 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 The time of drought will make men of God tarnish us. In fact, a lot of the battles in, in church is men of God trying to get other men of God. Help us. There are some people, <laughs> there are some people, to be honest with you, I, I was telling, I think I was talking to Bishop Van, and I, and, I, I, and I was even talking to, I think, Apostle. I am just waiting for them to make a mistake. The receipts I will print. They will swear never to attack a man of God again. Jesus. So you just stay calm and you watch them. Some even, they've come to church, but they've approached people. To try and create things. I'm telling you. This is why many are struggling in their own personal life. They claim they love the Lord. But when God starts lifting somebody and it doesn't come the way they want or they can't benefit. They start shooting arrows. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Understand this today. Understand this today. That just because things are difficult. She was made for the camera. Look at that. Amen. Hey, mama. Oh. <laughs> Understand this, please. As we finish now and we're about to pray. Amen. Drought in the promised land has not disqualified what God is doing. Thank you. Drought in the promised land has not disqualified what God wants to do. Drought in the promised land has not stopped God's intention. It's simply there to put you into your destined prophetic calling. As you rise up today and you're ready to pray. I want you genuinely to ask God for strength. To be able to withstand what God has destined for you. Amen. Can you do me a favor, Mike? I know we haven't sung this song in a while. Can you give me heaven on earth, please? I felt like a bishop. Can you give me that number? (laughs) (laughs) 
Mama, mama. <laughs> understand, sickness can be a drought. You don't understand why am I going through this difficult time? Why is it the way it is? Understand, it's just something that is passing, that is sending you somewhere that God has destined for you. It doesn't mean you're spiritually weak. You see, if the plumbing in your house goes bad, it doesn't mean your digestive system has gone bad. Don't confuse your house for your stomach. Amen. Many of you have made your body to be you. I'll say that one more time. Just because the windows of your house broke doesn't mean your eyes have become blind. Amen. Your house and you are two different things. When you walk into your physical house, you don't say, this is me. You say, it is my house. This body you're living in is also what? Your house. It is not you. So when things are broken in that house, don't mistake it for you. Jesus is the greatest repairman because he designed that house. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Understand that the Lord Jesus who made that house... The Lord Jesus who designed your house is the same one that will come put it together again. Just the same way a handyman can come and fix something and it's working. It's the same thing God will do. In fact, God will replace everything. He won't just fix it. So sickness in your body, just a drought. Yeah. I, I don't know if somebody can hear me. Yes. Sickness in your body is just a drought. Amen. Don't mistake value for cash. Anyone that has cash but has no value will become broke. Because what makes you wealthy is value. That is why when they look at successful men, they don't count the dollars in their pocket. They say their net worth. What are they worth? They don't say uh, this is how much they have. It's not enough. Because you having money doesn't mean you have the ability to regenerate it and continue to generate it. If there is no value, there is poverty. The cure to poverty is not Father, give me cash. Is God, give me the ability to become valuable. Amen. What is needed, people will pay for. Yes. I, I thought I was speaking to somebody. So good. What is valuable? People will pay for. People will chase after. People will desire. People will do everything to have. When God told us to, to come to see me and to get this place, many said, ah, it's too far, people won't come. People are coming from all over the world to be here. Amen. Amen. It doesn't matter what anybody thinks. When you have value, you can be in the wilderness like John the Baptist. Yes. Shouting, repent, and people will come from the cities to yes. seek you out. Yes. Yes. Value. Yes. Value. So just because some dollars may be minus for some time, God is just telling you, redirect your attention. Amen. Build your value. Amen. Amen. Don't have false confessions. I deserve. Nobody deserves anything. There is somebody that deserves to be healthy and they are sick. It's good, it's good. There is a child that deserves life and they died before time. Come on. Nobody deserves anything. Yeah. It's a lie. We are all products of the grace and the mercy of God. Amen. Whether we are aware of it or unaware of it, yeah. we are all product of God's grace and God's mercy. That is where our reliance should be. Don't ever boast on, I am this, I am that, this is who I am, this is what. Foolishness. I know the most hardworking people that are struggling. And I know people who don't work as much that are doing well. Don't mistake it. <laughs> Can you hear me? <laughs> don't confuse it. 
drought is but for a time. Whenever you see drought, understand that God is redirecting your attention. Amen. God is redirecting your attention. Don't be those that today you are in this industry, next year you are in another industry. Whenever the world changes, you also shift, 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 shift. By the time your time comes to go home, you never did anything. Teaching good. Good teaching. God can redirect your attention to do something. Because God will never expand you beyond the abilities he has given you. Yes. You pick up skills. But you won't be, okay, now the world is doing this. So no. Imagine if we also said, now we are just a digital church. How many people will be undelivered? Yes. Yeah. Understand what God has given you. Is this your son? I want you all to just lift your hands to the Lord. Say, Father, give me strength. Father, Father give, give me strength. strength. For this time. For this time of drought, of drought, that I may withstand, that I may withstand, that I don't lose the grip of the promise, that I don't lose the grip of the promise. Help me to hold on. Help me to hold on. Lift up your voice and pray. Father, give us the strength. Time, God, give me the strength that I will stand during this season, during this drought. To withstand, to hold fast Father, to the so promise that, that you would be touched for me, O oh God. And that I would not waver, today. that I would not move so out of the place, O oh God. Fall. But that I would stand firm, that my faith Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, in the name of Jesus, reveal to me, reveal to me by your spirit, by your spirit, that I may know, that I may know what will sustain me in this time. What will sustain me in this time? Father, do not allow me to be caged. Father, do not allow me to be. Don't allow me to be lost. Not allow me to be lost. But keep me, O oh Lord. But keep me, O oh Lord. As you sustain me, as you sustain me, strengthen my vision. Strengthen my vision. For destiny, for destiny that you have ordained for me. Lift up your voice and begin to pray.
just pray for greater grace to come upon your life lift your voice and begin to speak to God Of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, every resistance in the place God has planted me, I address you in the name of Jesus. I pull down your power in the name of Jesus and I command you to be scattered. Today, I push all giants. Today, I push all giants. Who have come to frustrate the call of God on my life? All those who have come to frustrate the call of God on my life. In the name of Jesus, we stop your work. We rip you off your abilities. We render you powerless. In the name of Jesus, today I drive you out of my life. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. Oh, my Father, in the name of Jesus. Oh, my Father, in the name of Jesus. In this hour. In this hour. Thank you for fighting for me. Thank you for fighting for me. Thank you for revealing yourself to me. Thank you for revealing yourself to me. A 
as Elijah commanded rain to fall, as Elijah commanded rain to fall, I command rain to fall. I command rain to fall. Business. On my business. On my business. On the work of my hands. Whatever God has given me to do. In the name of Jesus. Let rain fall. Let rain fall. Let rain fall. Let rain fall. In the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. This is the prayer I have for all of you. Amen. May you hear the voice yes. of the king. Thank you. Yes. May you hear the voice of the king. Yes. Let me tell you, there is nothing more beautiful than to hear the voice of God. When you can hear God, you become, you become help. You become help to the helpless because it is the desire of God to rescue people. Mm. God wants to rescue people. Amen. But God is looking for laborers. There are no laborers. That is the Lord's burden. The Lord needs you. The Lord needs you. That when you speak to people, that people understand that truly God is, God is talking to me. You see, when I'm giving these details of these things, if you don't believe in God, uh, you may think that they are acting, they are doing this, it's okay. But the person who received it, you see, there's something that happened this week, a prophet. Mm. Somebody said, you know, I never look at what people say about me. I really don't care. Honestly, I don't. But I was talking to, uh, uh, to a man of God, a powerful man of God and a brother in Christ. And a man I respect so much. He's the pastor of Hungry Generation. His name is Pastor Vlad. And we were texting this morning while I was my, on my way here. And I was very grieved because I was sent a video. Mm. And in the video, I had done a stream with him and people like a lot of, listen, 99% of the people blessed. Mm -hmm. But there was like 1%, less than 1% mm -hmm. that like were attacking the men of God. They even made some few fools made videos and calling him names and stuff. It grieved me. And the reason why it grieved me, me, you can talk about me, it's fine. But it grieved me because I was like, this man has such a pure heart mm. to help people, yeah. to preach the word of God. It's like, what are you even attacking? Okay, attack me. That's right. Because me, I'm doing, some, he, he's supernatural too. But I'm doing some prophetic stuff that are crazy that people think that I'm, yeah. I'm like people are giving me scripts and uh, I'm hiring. It's okay. At least me, there is room for doubt because it's too incredible yes. for it to be that sharp. Amen. It's just, it's like there has to be something. That's right. I'm okay with that because even the Lord Jesus, they did the same, but it That's grieved right. me yeah. for that. It really hurt me. And I told him, pastor, I have to confess. 
my heart, I was for the, this thing. I never watched these things. They never matter to me. It doesn't matter what I, this hurt me, especially because it was pointed to you. Mm. And he told me, you know, it's part of our calling. If everybody says good things about us, then something is wrong. I said, I agree, but my love, knowing your heart, it, it actually bruised me. But the point of the moral of the story is this. Comparing how many people have been blessed and people who are trying to tarnish what God is doing, doesn't even match up and those who are for us those who are called to us they will hear us Amen. and those who are not they will not and that's fine yes we are not everybody's cup of tea yeah. i am cappuccino <laughs> i may not be for you but it is a shame it is a big time shame when people are being blessed people's life are being changed Credit that to Satan. Something must be so wrong with you. You really think that the, you see they always say that familiar spirits know things about you. That's a lie. Where does the Bible say that? The Bible never said that. Can demons figure out some things? Yes, but to know you? No. What I'm telling you is a secret. This is not word of knowledge. It's not like picking up some stuff. You came to me there. You said, please pray for me. And I wasn't, going to, I wasn't even going to prophesy. I said, come. Because when you have the spirit of prophecy, yes. you can prophesy anytime. Yes. And those who have the gift of prophecy don't understand the spirit of prophecy. Yes. They can't get it. Bahariya <laughs>
Father be eternally glorified. Lord Jesus, all this is because of you. On our own, we can do nothing. I am not only empty without you, I am helpless without you. All these mighty manifestations, Lord, are because of you. Lord Jesus, if you leave us, who will be our help? Who will be our protector? Who will be our guardian? Who will be our father? You are our hope and salvation. Lord Jesus, you are our hope and our salvation. Our eyes look to you. I look to you. Lord, all these people that are here physically and those who are at home, they are not gathered here because of me. They are here because of you. Father, let all glory and honor return to you. Forgive us for every moment we have forgotten that all this is because of you. Forgive us when we have come into this house to seek man and not you. Father, we have errors. I have mistakes. Father, I can fail, but you will never fail. You will never fail that woman. You will never fail that man. You will never fail any of us. Lord Jesus, we look to you. Father, be glorified now and forever. Thank you that you are our God. Thank you that you forgive all our sins. Thank you that you wash away all our iniquities. That you heal all our sicknesses. That you crown us with love and tender mercies. Father, be glorified now and forever. Lift up your voice and just worship him. And thank you. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Clap your hands to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Clap your hands to the Lord. 